I'm going to give an, a little update about what's been happening in Squeak in the last years. Um, a little bit about me. I'm a squeaker. Um, I was a squeaker since 1997. That's when I first posted to the Squeak mailing list, and uh, some uh, some of you know that. Um, I've been a member of the Squeak community ever since, um, and of the Squeak Oversight Board forever, because the first time we had a elected Squeak Board was in 2006, and I was elected there and have been re-elected every year. Um, and also, um, I am the eToys development team lead um, since 2006, and right now all of that is my volunteer um, job, I would say. Um, it's, it's just in my spare time. I'm actually freelancing. Um, and if you want to know more about what I'm doing, um, you can come to me later. But uh, right now I'm not looking for work. Um, I'm uh, pretty well uh, stuffed with, with my contract. So I'm, uh, my main uh, client is Viewpoints Research on Case Institute. Um, but that will not last forever, so maybe someone has a really good opportunity for me to uh, speak up. So Squeak 4, that's the really big thing um, where basically everything changed. For one thing, it's free software now, and we have a community process that seems to work. Um, so now developing Squeak is fun again. Um, I'm going to talk about the free software part first. Um, those who are involved in, in the Squeak community um, know that uh, the Apple released Squeak in 1996 as a free software um, project, an open source project, but they chose a handwritten license. And a couple of years later, when, when open source um, became more popular, it turned out there were a few clauses in there that made it incompatible with other sources, um, with other projects. Um, then OPC happened, one laptop per child, um, which is a little green laptop that's uh, distributed uh, to children, mostly in, in the lesser developed world. Um, and that's a laptop that's Complete, that's running free software completely. And ETOS was going to be on there as one of the uh, more useful uh, software packages. Um, and so we needed to relicense Squeak. So uh, Viewpoints uh, went back to Apple and they got their lawyers to talk and they relicensed their old Squeak from 1996 to um, to the Apache license. And then we went out to all the contributors um, in Squeak and got them to relicense their stuff as under MIT because MIT is compatible with everything. Um, and so in OPC for the eToys image, we uh, finished that in December 2008. Um, then it took two more years to make Squeak itself compatible and to remove all the stuff that's, uh, that someone objected to. And the, the driving factor for that was to be able, oops, to get a legal home for Squeak. So I can announce today that uh, Squeak joined the SFC. Uh, the SFC is this is the Software Freedom Law Center. Uh, that's an umbrella organization for free software projects. Um, there are quite a couple of known names here. Um, I've just put them in. Um, I see Mercurial there. Zamba is probably known to some. Um, so they provide financial services and legal services for open source projects, um, which also meets, means that we now can finally accept donations and that we can relieve Isaac from doing our finances. Thank you, Isaac, for doing that for so long. Um, so I need to talk to Nauri later 
um, to get that going. Um, and also we have a new community process. The community process works by having an open Monticello repository where anyone can, um, can submit to, that's the inbox, and then there's a closed repository um, where anybody can update from, so you just press the update squeak button as usual, um, at, and the core developers can submit there. Um, we are about 20 core developers right now, um, and what we, what we found is that in the release processes before, too much burden fell on the release managers because they had to gather all the submissions and actually make them into packages, put them into, um, into the release, and it was not a thankful job. Um, many people are not thankful. Um, I know uh, that it wasn't easy for those who signed up to be on the release team. And so right now there's no single gatekeeper and we have a very low barrier to contributing. So if you're using Squeak and you see something that's a little bug or a little improvement, you just save your project, um, you save your Monticello file into the inbox, and that's it. There will be a commit notice uh, posted to the Squeak developers list, and someone will look at it. Uh, it also helps if you send an email to the Squeak developers list, but not even that is necessary. So, it's fun again. Um, and it seems to be working. We got uh, 2,700 commits to the trunk repository to date, uh, a bit more, and 1,000 commits to the inbox. Um, so, it's progress again. And we, that, uh, that free software release was 4.0, it was equivalent to 3.10, looked the same. Um, and for that one is where is the first release we did with that new um, with that new process. So we got the new speak looked now nice and clean. Although we still have colored windows, you can choose. Um, we have the closures from Elliot's cock work, and also uh, we we worked on modularity. So there are about 30 packages you can unload now. Um, and let me show it to you briefly so not everyone has seen Squeak in a while. Um, I'm going to toggle full screen, does that work? Yes. Um, so this is, no. So the uh, upper part is um, cut off. Okay, so I'll leave it at that. Uh, so we have a little toolbar here now. You can update Squeak. Um, you can search for classes or methods in here uh, right from the toolbar that, that works nicely. So if I say object, it opens the system browser, an object. Um, and here in, here's a few information. Uh, workspaces that are open when you when you download the uh, the release and in here you can see the inbox that's where you submit your stuff if you're not a core developer that's a trunk where you submit stuff if you are and then we also have this squeak for one repository where all the released packages are so that's not used for actual development um, and then for those who know Monticello uh, there's your local repository you have a question uh, I thought that was it. It's, it's not, not quite the same, uh, obviously. Um, here under extras, there is uh, the window color, oops, the window color preference, where you can say you want uniform window colors. So if that's more you're liking, then you get a clean, plain look. Um, I personally like my colors, so um, that's it. And um, we got shout now in, and we got uh, the the font work from Kuis, and um, it's um, 
it's fun to do it in, again. Yeah, I have to say. Okay, and um, right now we're working on 4.2. Um, there is no real, uh, uh, no release date set yet, and um, the the features we want to uh, get in is that we want to have packages. Uh, that's sort of like a standard library of community-supported packages that get chipped with the image, because it's always hard to find a version of a package that's not in the image that actually works with your release. So that's the idea, uh, to actually ship a library of probably Monticello packages on file, um, and then get them uh, to load on demand, and we're still looking for which um, which technique could do that? There are several candidates. Um, uh, there are Monticello configurations. There is installer. There's MetaCello. There's a couple of others that would be contenders. So uh, I would hope if, if someone of you has an interest in, then in that area, come speak to me this week, and I'm interested in hearing uh, what you might think about that idea. Um, the other big part is uh, working on documentation. Uh, we have the help system browser now in, in Squeak, and there is a documentation team forming, which appears to work in bursts. Um, so in some week on, on the mailing list, we have, um, we have uh, 50 messages dealing with documentation, and then someone goes in and does class comments, and then in the next week, uh, there's none of it. Um, and then there's something that I would like to see in, uh, in one of the next, next releases is that uh, we get better media support again. Uh, so this has been um, neglected for quite a while in, in Squeak. Um, and maybe I'm, uh, you will see more when, when I talk about my other passion there that might come next. Yes, so I'm going to talk about ETHOS. Are there questions about Squeak for now? I'm rushing through that, apparently. Yes? How many? <laughs> uh, which is a bit of a problem because none really found the acceptance yet. Um, so I would like to see a simple namespace solutions and they're like what Goran uh, implemented that, that looks like the right level of complexity to me. Doesn't have to be more complex than that. Um, we will get there eventually. Um, do you have a favorite? I don't know. I have no. no idea, but I'm okay. Sure. Yes, yes. Uh, I would like to see that. Anything else? No? Um, okay, so eToys. As I said, I'm the lead developer. That doesn't mean I'm, uh, I'm the only one doing the work. Um, so there are many more uh, doing it. OPC was the, um, the event that happened uh, so that uh, work on, on eToys started again. So Viewpoints financed that for two years to port eToys onto the little old PC machine. Um, and it turned out that this was a strategically really cool thing um, because eToys is now part of Sugar, officially. Uh, Sugar is the user interface framework of the old PC uh, laptop. Every laptop that's been sold so far uh, runs Linux. Um, and it has an X11 um, graphical user interface, but it's not running GNOME or KDE, which are the biggest Linux uh, UI frameworks nowadays, but it runs Sugar, which is also a um, UI framework that's targeted specifically at kids. Um, and there has been some talk about Windows being involved, uh, or Microsoft being involved with that. Yes, there have been um, pilot test, but no country actually chose to give Microsoft money. They are shooting for Linux, um, unsurprisingly. And so what, what we did is we piggyback on 
um, on sugar to get into Linux distributions. Um, so what I do is I build the eToys packages and I do not include a virtual machine. But because eToys is part of sugar and there is interest in the Linux community to package sugar, um, they need to package a squeak VM too. So there need to be squeak VM packages that are maintained by the Linux developers. So it's not even us who has to do the work because that is always the problem. Doing a virtual machine that works on any Linux distribution is impossible, period. That's not something a single person can do because you cannot know the details of all the Linux distributions. But there are people who do. Uh, that's the users of those um, distributions. And so we just gave, give them a tarball here. That's our sources to the, to the virtual machine. That's nice. That's just C code. Uh, they know how to deal with that. Um, and so they built a virtual machine. So we have a 4.0 VM, a Squeak VM, in Debian, in Fedora, and a couple of uh, minor, um, uh, not as big Linux distributions. Uh, so that's a big progress because we always have that bootstrap uh, problem. Um, say I have a squeak image here, or a Faro image, or whatever uh, other squeak compatible image queues. Um, uh, how do I run this on this machine? And if there is a VM, that's already a big bonus. And there's a problem with the squeak or the small talk image model. Um, the free software people do not like images because to them it's just a big binary blob of things they cannot introspect. We as small talkers know, okay, you could look in there, you have all the tools you need to look uh, at the image, what it is. But they, they fear that um, and so eToys is still not officially in Debian, um, but it's easy to install. So we have, there are packages that are done by Debian people, but they are in the non-free section. And they're in the non-free section not because they are not free, but because they cannot be, uh, the Debian uh, gatekeepers won't let it in to the official Debian thing. So. Um, I'm not really sure what the, what the best way uh, to, to deal with that would be. Um, maybe someone actually needs to sit down and write a bootstrap so that you just file out all the sources, build an image from that. That would be fine with them. But they really want to see, okay, from this version to that version, what did change? Um, even though nobody probably is going to look at it, they want to have that trail, that paper trail. Um, so we cannot just release a new image. Um, Anyway, so um, I would urge anyone who's thinking about doing an application, a Squeak application, a Faro application, whatever, uh, uh, for Linux, uh, to not include a virtual machine. Doing it is a cheap way out, and we, eToys has been hurt a little bit by that because we used to offer RPMs and Debian packages on the Squeakland website, but by providing these packages, nobody in the distribution was interested in doing them. And so we didn't get the widespread uh, adoption. And now we do not offer um, pre-built packages for eToys anymore on the Squeakland website, but we just have a link to our sources, Tarball, and anybody who wants to build it for their favorite Linux version can do it. Um, so just as a little bit of a reminder, um, eToys uh, goes way back to the original idea for small talk. Um, so that's a sketch Alan Kay did in 1972 um, where he wrote a paper um, about his vision of a dynamic book of the future. So you can see a little tablet-like laptop there. Uh, he even built a model out of cardboard. Um, and there was a software to be running there that could be modified even by kids. To, um, to adapt it to their needs. And that's how the idea of small talk uh, got born and it took quite some time. Um, so 35 years later, these are my twins uh, in the garden and they have old PC laptops and they uh, can use eToys to change their little games uh, if they are written in eToys. Um, and because uh, that's an interesting um, 
thing because it, it deals with kids and education, we have a really nice community um, at Squeakland, uh, which is our website, squeakland.org. Um, for example, here's a screenshot, uh, here's a photograph of Squeakfest uh, this year that happened in Wilmington, North Carolina. It was a small Squeakfest. Um, so these are not all the participants, but what I want to point out is count the ratio of female participants. So in uh, looking uh, in here, I see uh, some women at least. Thank you for coming. Uh, it, it makes the conference much nicer. Um, and uh, it makes the community um, more agreeable, I would, I would say. And they, they have so many ideas too. And so that was a really nice small conference. Um, there's Walter Bender here, the, the head of Sugar Labs. Um, my wife in the background here. So we can even go to the same conference. She's the head of, the, of education at uh, Squeakland. Um, that was cool. Um, the next eToys version is going to be 4.1. Uh, it's, it's an accident uh, or incident. Uh, it's incidental that it's the same version number as Squeak right now. Um, no relation, uh, unfortunately. Uh, we hope to uh, solve that later. But I, uh, the, the big thing we did over eToys 4.0 is that we switched to Monticello-based um, uh, development uh, environment. So we basically use the same uh, update mechanism as Squeak now. So we have a trunk um, repository and an inbox repository. So anybody who wants to help out with eToys, you're welcome. Um, and it's, it's a little bit different because, uh, well, that gets too technical. So we still have, an, have a change set stream. But the change set stream basically triggers Monticello updates. So it's a superficial difference. Um, one big thing. Uh, that we got in is Dr. Gio by Hilaire Fernandez. So that's a really nice addition. Um, otherwise, we don't have much new features, I think. Um, oh, no, on the next page, there, there will be something else. Something else. And uh, I did a release candidate yesterday uh, here at Camp Smalltalk. Um, so that was cool. Uh, the actual release is going to be in two weeks from now. And you can go to squeakland.org and download it there. Uh, there's even the, uh, the release candidate. Um, yes, so that's the current version here. So there's only a Windows and a Macintosh download. And then we have something called eToys to go. Uh, that's a version that does bundle a virtual machine, but not only one, but one for Windows and L Linux and um, the Macintosh. And you put that on a USB stick, and then you can work using that USB stick uh, on a Mac and on a Linux machine and on a Windows machine, and you have your projects just on there, and you just take them with you. It's a really convenient thing, uh, in particular because some schools lock down their computers so that even the teachers cannot install uh, any software on there. So that gets around it. And below here, there are release candidates. Uh, the Windows installer hasn't been built yet. But you see 12 September, that was yesterday, um, where we did that. Um, Yes, one more thing um, is that Isaac uh, got one eToys developer uh, into Google Summer of Code. Uh, he's there. Hey, Ricardo. Um, from Argentina, right? Yes, lots of, of Argentinians at Isaac. Cool. Um, I like that. Um, and the bigger part of it was doing scientific diagrams. and. Those need a little bit of work, so they're not in this release yet. Uh, but what is in 4.1 are bubbles. So um, what, what you can do uh, is add a little speech balloon to, to an object. 
And if you haven't noticed yet, I'm giving my presentation using eToys, right? So that's not PowerPoint or something like that. Uh, it's, um, it's Squeak running there, it's eToys. Uh, I can, if I want to, uh, open my browser and uh, fix the system while I'm giving the presentation. I'm not going to do that now, but it's, um, it's well and alive. Um, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it for eToys. Um, maybe you saw this little uh, balloon guy here uh, that walks as my talk progresses. Uh, that's just a very tiny script there. So I can look into it and there's a script running here. And that script got just looks at the pages of my book um, and it counts the number of pages and it calculates a fraction and then if my balloon is too far to the left it goes to the right and if it's too far to the right it goes left. That's how you do that in, in eToys and um, it's fun. Um, so, um, questions about the eToys part? No, so far. Good. Um, oops. Yeah. So I, I think I should uh, say a word about forks. Um, it's, a, it's a funny thing. Um, I like that picture. Um, so forks. Yes, uh, th there was a question about uh, what the relation between Faro and Squeak is. Um, and my take on it is that it's, it turned out to be a good thing. It took a lot of tension out of the community. Um, both communities are prospering. Uh, there is a lot of cross fertilization, I would say. There are some people who are in both uh, communities and exchange fixes between this and that. And there could be more of it, true. But um, on the other hand, uh, nobody has too much time, right? So I, I started to follow the fire list. I, I needed to unsubscribe again because I just couldn't deal with the volume in addition to my OPC list and my sugar list and my squeak lamp list and the squeak developers list and a couple of others. So uh, I'm not actively participating uh, in there, but I, I see that there is a that there still is a lot of common ground. And I, I think that in the future, uh, there will be even more. And um, just like we're sharing the Squeak virtual machine, um, I think that there could be even more sharing. Um, so talking a little bit about the future. Um, so the, the future of eToys uh, is Squeak, uh, in my opinion. So we, we did fork. Um, at 3.8, so 3.8, Squeak 3.8 was the last thing uh, where we sat down and merged the changes from eToys to Squeak and from Squeak to eToys. Um, and after that, uh, nobody found the, the time to, to do it. Um, and so now it's uh, it's a good time again. Uh, so that was one thing why we, why we switched to Monticello. So with Monticello, it should be a lot easier to compare what is in eToys, what is in Squeak, and just move everything over. Um, and uh, the way we, we do the refactoring in Squeak is that we keep stuff working. Um, so uh, it takes a lot longer than just ripping it out, but also it, uh, uh, it leaves the fun stuff in. So um, if you want to really see some fun Squeak, there's, a, there's an image called Fun Squeak by Edgar from South America, um, hmm? Argentina, huh? Okay, um, so, so he did, does really cool, cool squeak, squeak images that had, have all kinds of media stuff in it and really cool uh, things. Um, and so I can recommend it. It's on the Squeak download page, squeak.org slash download. Um, so then for us, because we are only a handful of developers at eToys, 
it takes a lot of pressure out to maintain the whole stack of the system, right? If you just have to concentrate on the eToys part, uh, that would be good. Uh, it's also a bit of work to even identify what the eToys layer is because it has its roots everywhere. Someone who tried to clean up Morphic will know that. Um, so it's not, not going to be simple, but we'll try. Um, one thing that I would like to see, I'm not sure how soon that, uh, that could be uh, working, is having a common kernel between Squeak and Faro, because I don't really see the point of having two implementations of the collection classes or something, like, something on that level. Um, so that would be cool. So not only sharing the Squeak VM, but the, the lowest layer above that, at least. Maybe. Um, but above all, um, what, what we at Squeak uh, try to do is having fun. It's, a, it's a pretty much uh, a, a volunteer-only um, affair. Um, we're trying to clean it up, but uh, it's also that we want a personal computing system. And for example, I want to be able, uh, I expect from, an, from a personal computing system to be able to give a talk like this. And uh, it didn't really take long to do that presentation. Um, I think no longer than, than it would have taken me in PowerPoint. Now, I'm a very well-versed uh, eToys user, admittedly, uh, but it's, uh, it's all there. Uh, you can do anything you want. Um, and um, yeah. So, thank you and have fun. Um, there's one thing I, I want to show you. So something that was also sponsored by ESAC, they're doing great stuff, um, is the Squeak Virtual Machine for the iPad. So I have an iPad over there. Uh, Meet me later if you want to see it. But uh, there's also a, a video I made um, where you can see eToys running on the iPad. And so that's, that's me doing stuff there. Uh, it's a little bit hard to, to actually hit the little uh, icons, but it works. And you cannot only use one touch thing, but two or three or four, and actually the iPad supports 11 touch contacts. Um, so it's for your 10 fingers and your nose. Um, so <laughs> like the old Emacs keyboards, right, where you had um, 10 modifiers to press. Um, so that's an exciting thing. And a couple days ago, Apple announced that it's OK again to use any programming languages you like to program for the iPad or the iPhone. Um, so this actually, uh, it runs on my iPhone too, um, where it is totally unusable because it's uh, way too small. And when you try to use it, uh, you, you see that it's going to, uh, to be really hard to, to redo the UI. Um, so it's working. I'm not sure if you can see anything, but the little car is moving. And I can zoom in. OK. Um, so doing something uh, with uh, tablet devices uh, is going to be important for eToys because our PC is planning to do a, um, a tablet version of Derek's O, uh, which makes sense because the more, um, the more units you do uh, that are the same, uh, the better it is. It's more robust. You do not have to have a localized keyboard. And uh, there are so many languages on the world that un it's unbelievable. Um, so eToys is translated into about 20, 20 languages by now. Um, but uh, in particular for kids, it's important that they see the software in their own language. Um, because learning a foreign language at the same time as doing their, as learning uh, programming or something else, it, it's just a double burden for them. So 
that that's not not a good idea. Um, yeah, and you can even do small talk programming there. And there it gets really ugly because trying to hit the scroll bars is uh, next to impossible. Uh, it helps if you if you use a little stylus, but um, no good. But just a classic example. So three plus four. Hold down my command button and press P, and there's seven. Yay. Okay. So, but um, do you have any more questions? Um, I believe you have five, five more minutes bec before the next speaker. Yes? Um, you probably need to ask the guys who are doing it. Uh, so there are software packages that work on both. Seaside 3 works on both. Um, I don't know what needed to be done to squeak to make it work. I just know it, 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 that there is a package for it. Um, so they haven't diverged that much yet in the, in the, at that level, uh, which is good in my opinion. Um, but uh, because I didn't really try to port anything from squeak to Faro or vice versa, I cannot really tell. Uh, but there probably are people here you would you could ask. <laughs> well, yeah, why not? Uh, yes, there's a Squeak VM for Android. Um, it's not finished yet, as far as I know. Um, but uh, what was the latest? I don't know. So the, the thing in, in, uh, in Android is that you do not have executables. It's Java, but you have GNI, the Java native interface. And so uh, the way the Android version of Squeak works is that it packages the VM as a library that gets linked to your uh, Java wrapper, so to say. And um, I think I've seen a screenshot that ran on the Google phone or something like that. Um, and so help is welcome there. And um, I think the, the last uh, thing was that they wanted to get the network stack working so you can do um, VNC into your uh, squeak image. Um, so um, for example, what, what you saw here um, with the uh, eToys on the iPad, I, I added a, a couple of things to the virtual machine that was done by John McIntosh and sponsored by Isaac. Uh, was the multi-touch thing, and that when you rotate the display, it brings up the keyboard. And so you can actually get keyboard input. Whereas, uh, I think if you download John's version, you, can, you only have mouse input, which is a bit, uh, leave, leaves a bit of uh, things to, to, to be wished for. Uh, although we managed to do zero benchmark by copy and pasting characters from the browser, that, that works. Um, but it's not fun yet. Um, and possibly uh, the Android thing is in an even less developed state. Thanks a lot.